green button. Yeah. What is that? Alright, so now. But now I want it to do this. To weigh it up. My job at your keys is education outreach, which I like to have a big team for, and uh, Kevin and Peggy and Kate and uh, other people here are all part of that team. And uh, somebody talked about, Suzanne, you talked about retiring. <laughs> I said, retiring. <laughs> Darn it, I really should be. But you know, these telescopes, I'm in love with these telescopes, and, and I'm also really, really appreciate um, what authentic data and getting deep into science like you talked about me to students and to teachers. Um, science teachers love science and if you let them do it, they stay teaching and they're, they're better teachers I think and when kids get to do science they really learn what it's about rather than accumulating facts. So with all that said, um, I also hate doing presentations. <laughs> so I put them off as long as possible, but I love telescopes, so I'm really working hard on them. <laughs> um, and what I want to tell you about is the telescopes that I've been working hard on lately. So, um, we, um, I hope this, I think this is the first slide. So, last year, I think at the HOU conference, we talked about um, the opportunity to get onto the Skynet network and help make our dreams of telescopes around the world have another uh, venue, a different space, a different way uh, to manage to get this work done. And it is big work. So all the different ways we're getting telescopes on the network for kids to use, the better. Um, uh, Skynet is operated out of the University of North Carolina and the principal investigator is Dan Reichert who got his PhD at the University of Chicago. Yerkes is owned by the University of Chicago. So the idea of one of their own being able to um, put the 41 inch telescope online was acceptable and appealing to the University of Chicago. So there's a sense of trust there. Plus, this telescope wasn't used very much. It's a big, as those of you who saw it, it's a big OC telescope. I don't like to be in that dome. Um, so if it can up, it, and it did have Comsoft, which was, um, which is a DOS-based operating system running it. So it was automated to some extent. Anyway, so I'm glad to be able to report, and as some of you saw last night, the telescope does operate on the Skynet system. We're not done. We are going to redo the mirror. As soon as this conference is over, we're going to take the mirror out and put a new coating on it, because the mirror is actually a really crummy uh, surface. Um, so, and there are a few other um, things we do to make the to make the Skynet automation complete, not Vivian dependent. Um, we also have the HOU 30 inch that Bob Holmes um, has completely taken apart and redone uh, on Skynet. So Bob, hear us, we love you. Actually I think he does hear you, he's logged in. Great. Hey Bob, can you hear me? Yes I can. Oh, okay, I didn't know you were on. <laughs> hey, Bob, it's Charlie. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Everybody. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob, did you hear Hello, Peggy? Hello, everyone. Did you hear Peggy talking? No, I didn't. I just, I just got on. Okay, well, Peggy also demonstrated cannabis and a light curve. And you know got Tyler. So it was great. But anyway, um... So there are a few glitches right now with the 30 inch that will work out, but uh, this is an image of, um, from the 30 inch 
Um, it's of XX SIG, which is um, a variable star, which is a fa favorite of one of our teachers, Rich DeCoster. So, um, and he's using it for um, determining the light curve of XX SIG and using it with his students. So, I want I picked this one because it was taken through the Skynet system by a teacher who's doing um, a high-level project with it, not just a pretty picture. And then the other picture um, is from the 41 inch, and it has a supernova in it. Okay, so this is, again, we come back to M51 and a supernova. So a lot of us started in with you know, the 94, 1994i supernova, which I believe was over here somewhere, and we're back to a supernova in M51. And the cool thing about that was um, some of the Yerkes teachers and students requested an image from, um, I think it was the Dolomiti telescope, a, a different telescope on the Skynet system that did not... Um, I, th I think it was before the supernova or after it anyway, so, the, so with, with those, they called us and said, can we use your picture, you know, that one of your students got from our telescope, so they have it, I don't have it up here, but they have a nice before and after picture of um, the supernova and made a little blinky movie about it and that sort of thing. And then we have the same, same pair of pictures with the 41 inch of before and after the supernova. In this case, we didn't do the light curve, but anyway, it, it, it's probably in the data somewhere um, on the Skynet system. Any questions before I move to the next slide? Okay, so um, now to be on Skynet, um, your telescope, you kind of make this agreement. They, they allow you to participate in the network, to have access to the other telescopes, to save your images in a database, to let you use their image processor. Their guys come out and work on your telescope and they don't charge you money. But if there's a gamma ray burst, they'd like you to let the telescope point to the gamma ray burst. Now you don't have to, you could put it in manual mode and, and, and just ignore that but it's pretty darn exciting when all the telescopes point to the gamma ray burst. So we've been working on this for two years, and um, I keep saying to Josh and Kevin, who work tirelessly, you know, someday the Yerkes 41-inch will point to a gamma ray burst for you. <coughs> so last night, who was in the dome when the dome started turning? <laughs> um, <laughs> We had some people up in the dome, and, up in the dome, and um, it was before astronomical twi or, uh, night, and so the telescope wasn't supposed to be doing anything. And all of a sudden, I, I'm I'm um, I'm down in the control room, and you know what had I been doing? I had I had uh, we had teachers looking through the 40 inch. We had teachers looking at the 41 inch. I had set the program on my computer in the control room so it would be on Skynet mode so it would start taking pictures as soon as it was dark enough. I'd given administrator permission, I granted permission to Skynet on the Skynet website. It wasn't time, it wasn't time to start pictures, seeing pictures yet, but I hear rumble, rumble down in the control room. This <laughs> is the dome turning. And I'm like, uh-oh, what's going on? <laughs> so I uh, looked on the Skynet site, and I saw that the telescope was gluing, and the dome was rotating, and, and for the observation, it was a GRB. So that was really, really exciting uh, for me personally because I wanted to kind of give back to the to the um, UNC guy um, a, a little telescope time. And by the way, if you're in, if you're there, people are in the dome, the will see you have to be just call Kevin and say, get out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Maybe you were in first I know. I got to turn the light off because I could turn the light on and off remotely. I didn't want to turn the 
light off while they were trying to negotiate up there. Anyway, so we got all excited and we um, pulled up a digital sky survey image to see if we could figure out what the GRB was and guess what? The, the pictures weren't matching. <laughs> so the problem was um, that over the weekend, the power had gone off, the green button hadn't been pushed upstairs, Kevin pushed the green button before we started, but we could have been making sure the telescope was synced to the sky on a twilight um, image beforehand if we didn't think to do that. So, um, so I don't know what, what was going on, but um, then pretty soon Kevin Iverson logs into the to the Yerkes control computer and uh, says, I got a telescope. And he um, analyzed where it was and then repointed the telescope and then it got back on target. So um, from what I can tell, this, is, this image is actually stacked with like 34 pictures in um, Astrometrica. And I think that the GRB was supposed to be right here, but maybe it was supposed to be up there. I haven't quite like figured out exactly where it was supposed to be. Um, we don't think we really got it, and um, but who knows? It was it was very exciting, and uh, they promised that it will happen again. <laughs> so it was a little practice run, but I was really excited that it happened when Global HRU was here. So we were doing a little bit of research, and this has been a constant question that Carol has. Well, what happens if there's a gamma ray burst, you know? Are we thrown off? Don't we have control of our telescope? Do we get to be authors? You know, these are the questions. So Carl, just for you, we had a gamma ray burst, and of course a gamma ray burst, uh, from what I can tell, is a giant, huge supernova in a galaxy bazillion light years away at the beginning of time, um, whenever that was. Uh, <laughs> 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 and so, so it was pretty exciting. But, uh, I missed it. Did you find the, 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 the spot for the gamma ray burst? Well, you know, I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. See, so first I thought it was over here, but actually these combined images, you can barely see them in a digital sky survey, but I think they're far away galaxies or something. And then I thought it might be over here. And there, on some of the images, there's a little smudge in here, and there's something there. I don't know. You know, to do this stuff, you really have to. Did anyone figure that out? No. If, if they didn't. The the Skynet guys think that they didn't catch it, but you know, I'm pretty persistent, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I want it to be there. <laughs> and actually, um, I think what we're gonna do is do a bunch of three-minute images of this region and see if we can see a faraway galaxy in here of where, maybe where the, where the event happened, even if we don't capture the event. Can you, can you produce images and link the previous ones? Yes, so I did a bunch of that. Mm. Yeah. Did you try using the paper for that? I did, but I don't have them. Uh, Astrometrica aligns them, and I didn't have them aligned, so I didn't take the... I have them on here, but they're jumping around, and I didn't align them yet. So it's pretty faint, and we lost um, we lost about 30 minutes because of having to sync the telescope. So we probably didn't get it, but it was still exciting. Um, okay, now I wanted to show you a couple pictures. Um, telescopes that are not in Williams Bay. These two people are not telescopes. This is Peggy and this is Bob. Um, <laughs> but there's a a picture of the 30 inch. Bob, I need a really good picture of the 30 inch. Are you okay. still there? Yeah. Okay, I need a really good picture of the 30 inch for this. Um, not that I don't love your face with Peggy, but. And then, um, then we have another telescope coming online, and this is the Stone Edge Observatory in Sonoma, California. So this is, um, Bob is going to have the biggest telescope of a private individual, right, Bob? Yes. This is 50 inch coming online very soon, probably before the conference is over. He's so fast. Um, this is a 20. This Stone Edge is a 20 inch telescope uh, with a, a private individual who has um, the resources to support it. And um, yeah, 
just jumping over to this side, the Stone Edge um, Observatory is really cool architecturally. It looks like a pyramid with this outside stairwell. Um, our stairway. Dick Truffers, back to early 90s, Dick Truffers, who, who got our first images actually of M51 in the supernova in 1994i um, at Leuchner Observatory. He built this observatory, and every AAS CD tell me, you know, I'm building this observatory, I'm building this observatory. And then, then a couple of years ago, he said, the observatory is built. Would you like to be its boss? <laughs> so I'm the boss of this observatory. <laughs> Well, we are being recorded, but that's what he tells me. I'm the boss. Um, this um, this observatory right now has um, a nice big uh, optic camera, but it's getting a new Apogee camera, forty thousand dollar Apogee camera with Sloan Digital Sky Survey um, filters. Um, and then the owner also wants to have an infrared camera. So we're going to set up a system where we can switch between cameras. So that's going to be awesome. That's great. And this right now to operate, I can't, we can't demonstrate this um, perhaps Thursday night, but what they're doing this week is they, um, they're venting, they're putting in some vents and putting in insulation in the floor and putting a new floor down inside, inside the observatory for heat abatement. So it's offline uh, this week. But there are two ways we run it right now. One is by command lines, using little Unix command lines, which is actually kind of a blast. I like to do it that way. It's not too student friendly. <laughs> um, the other way is um, we have um, written a graphical user interface that um, some of you may remember Jeff Sweet. Anybody remember Jeff Sweet? Jeff, uh, Jeff has been used, used the telescope a lot last spring with the graphical user interface from California, and Kevin used it, and Peggy's used it, and Jackie Barge is a big user from Chicago. But again, this is in California, so it's the wrong time zone. So Paris is a really good time zone for this telescope. <laughs> Um, um, Rich Kahn, um, one of our faculty at the university, he did this class in Paris in the spring, and he has the students use this telescope during this class. So I think we got to talk to you guys, or anybody else, you know, like who is interested in using this because we want to have um, international collaboration with it in whatever mode of operation. But it will be on Skynet. Now, the reason we like Skynet is because most teachers have more than one student. Most teachers have more than four students. And to have, and most teachers um, don't work day and, well, they do work day and night, but they don't always have their students, and the students that you want to influence the most often aren't the ones that can come back to school at night or early in the morning. So in, with Skynet, you can actually have everybody put in their images, their observation requests, and you can have everybody working on their observations, and you can occupy your whole class. So we want, even though it's fun to operate a telescope and it's instructional, the time isn't, we don't have that kind of time. No, oh, I'm a little confused. We all have the same password. How do we know which image? You have starts? to put your name on it. Put Carl P on it and I'll know it's yours. Oh, we're, when you name it. Oh, when, when you, you name, name it. it. So if you're, oh. if you're asking for an object, put your name on it. Then, then we can pick it up. Do we, oh, you get emails, although you get emails. You go so back to the site. Oh, you just go back to the site. Yeah. We never get an email notification. You don't get an email. You go and look. You go, so I, I'll show you. I'll show you how, how you get it. Um, now, uh, this is a picture of the 41 inch. One of the ways we check the weather is we use our um, um, ICANN, which was set up by our Japanese collaborators through Global Hands on Universe um, Connections. And this is the ICANN website. And I don't know, I wasn't really, 
I hate to do this because I don't know where it's going and what's operating. But anyway, um, okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Anyway, if you go to your keys and it's nighttime, you can uh, you can um, be uh, be an observer. You can uh, be a guest observer, and then you can look at the telescope. So I put that link in there, and we'll demonstrate it tonight. Ten minutes, please. Okay, good. So uh, next, what I want to introduce to you is the online image processor that the Skynet folks have just developed. All, and, and I will say that um, everything that they've done is awesome, but everything is under construction. So I just had a conversation with Josh, and um, he, 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 he's, they're putting um, a radio telescope on mine at Green Bank, and he just told me this is a really big job, much bigger than any of us thought. It's going to take me a year to do this. Um, and they're building telescopes in Australia. We've written a proposal, hopefully, to be able to hire somebody to do more with the website as well as with Afterglow. But I wanted to um, give you an idea of, of what this online image processor is about. So this is, um, this is an active link here. And I think it's an active link. Probably opens in a new window or something. Some such thing. All right, never mind. Oh, I really messed up. Um, okay, I have no idea where that is. So let, let me just. Um, okay, so. Hmm. Maybe you have to be out of presentation mode. Uh, you're you're in the browser right now. Right. Um, okay. So let's see. Let's do questions. Well, I'm trying to figure. Of course, I can answer questions while I'm trying to figure something out. We were the only telescope that could see it because it was a northern hemisphere object. Um, so no, we didn't we didn't do that. All right, let's see. All right, let's just do You can copy that URL and paste it in a new window or a new browser. Yeah. Um, well or I can just go right here. All right, now you start presentation. Okay, so Carl tells me I only have ten minutes, so I'm going to eight this five minutes ago. Eight, you have eight minutes. So we're not actually going to make this movie, but I want to show you this this um, presentation. So um, you would log into Afterglow using your login and password, where your images are. So if you use the FSU. Uh, log in, log in that way. If you use the Yerkes one, log in that way. Um, there are tutorials. This is really an important link. There are excellent tutorials for Skynet. They're made um, by the undergrads or somebody at University of North Carolina, and they really explain how to do everything. Um, if you're going to if you want to make an asteroid movie, um, you you need to align your images. But once they're aligned, you um, you need to know where the asteroid is in the first and last image, and you need to identify a reference star in the first and last image, and then it will um, it will the software will do the rest. And the software is operating on the computer in um, Chapel Hill. So, but if you decide you want to do this and you, you actually want to have your own asteroid, then make sure you budget time to choose an asteroid, to request an observation, to look at the images, 
figure out which is the asteroid in the reference, and then uh, to make the movie and save it in Afterglow. Now, here's some sites that I use. There's a cool site that JPL calls What's Observable. And you want to choose an observable asteroid. And if you want to make a movie, choose one that's maybe 14th magnitude. Don't choose like a 7th or 8th or 9th magnitude because it's going to be so bright that it overwhelms all the other stars in the image. You want to, you want to have a star field. So you'll probably want like 40 second or 60 or 80 second images so that you can actually see the asteroid. This isn't, Bob, if you're still listening, we're not doing research on this asteroid. We're entertaining ourselves with it moving. Um, you have to know your observatory code. For Yerkes, it's 754. For Stone Edge, it's G52. I got an observatory code for the uh, Stone Edge Observatory. That was a lot of work. <laughs> um, for Bob's uh, site, Astronomical Research Observatory, the code is H21. And I got that observatory code with a lot of coaches from Bob. Um, and then CTIO, I worked really hard to get an observatory code for the prompt telescope. And I was really scared to submit it because I wanted to do it right. And they promptly wrote back to me and said, just use CTIO 807. <laughs> so anyway, anybody need an observatory code? I know how to do it. <laughs> anyway, um, so here's uh, the same thing I already told you. You do have to look up this um, diagram and it's summarized and you get that from this site up here on top. And if anybody wa actually wants to do this, we will do it together. Here's a screenshot of what's observable um, and kind of a, a suggestion to what the constraints you might want to put in on your search for what asteroid to find. Okay, there's a couple examples. Um, the asteroid Cleopatra is in sample images when you go to Afterglow, and this was prepared by the guys on Skydeck. So it really works. Uh, Pasadena, I took for Dick Crawford because he's working on another project in Pasadena. <laughs> and um, this is the observation that you should use. Use images 0 through 40, and you log in using Yerkes 2, and Andrew 2 is the password there. Okay, now, here's an example of the Skynet page similar to what Rob showed you, exactly what Rob showed you. Um, and if you click on any of these, you can put in Pasadena to search, and then then this is the set you would want to use. You click on this. Um, I took 300 pictures. I'm telling you to use 0 through 40. Will work. And then um, um, a, a really good thing to do is, you know, you look at the images. You can preview them in Skynet. Notice what times they are because like I did these in a series, but you don't want one taking every minute for 10 minutes, you won't see anything. So you need to have separation. Um, you know, I suggested that you use 0 through 40, but maybe you could only, you might only want to use every fifth image if you want to make a, a small movie. Okay, now, <coughs> I, I can hear um, Carl saying that I should be done. So, I'm going to show you my movie. Okay, so, and I did put it on YouTube and I can't do it again. Uh, <laughs> there is, this is just every fifth image is at 0 through 40 through, and, and this was all done with, um, with Afterglow. So, okay, all right, well, yeah, and then, they, they give you a choice of two different kinds of movies to make, so I made both kinds. Uh, um, anyway, okay. So, more
more later, but especially later at the observatory. And it's going to be clear every night this week. Okay, every night it's going to be clear. If you want to take a nap and come back later, I suggest that. You know, last night wasn't so good because I thought we should have wine and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, any questions or? Um, I think it's a really wonderful, wonderful thing, and particularly to to have this spread around the world. So, do you think this is scalable, or it, this is how it's scalable? We need to put our telescopes on Skynet. Now, you don't have to use it on Skynet all the time. If you want to use it with ACP or with any other control, you can. You just you load the Terminator program when you want it on Skynet, and then you can go to bed, you know, and it'll work. So, but would you, for instance, produce a video training or train via Skype a group of teachers for sure. a few countries? Sure. And it'll introduce with a nice concrete challenge. Right. Let's make this together. Yes. Yep. So, can we... We can do that, and especially if we get people like Peggy or Kevin involved, mm -hmm. who are much better presenters, okay. you know, who... You know, because so shall we try a pilot one in Portugal? Yeah, yeah. but there is a telescope in Dolomiti. Does that make any? Dolomiti telescope is, I think, in Dolomite. Italy. Dolomite. It's M I T I. Yeah. Dolomite. Um, but you know, they are. Um, there's a telescope in Thailand coming on. There's one in New Mexico. There's a couple in but, uh, California. But none of these can be used like by the students in question. Um, we have to figure it out. So let's make that let's make that a conversation. Okay. Yeah. Because that's also important. So it is. It's important. See, the, the Skynet is a system for the use for the people who own telescopes on Skynet and their their clients, who the students or whatever. So we we have to add telescopes in order for there to be, you know, the you know, the, if we're going to bring a, a million kids in, we have to have more than a dozen telescopes, you know. Well, don't tell me to get them, because I will. <laughs> okay, the kids or the telescopes, we need both. Kevin. Both. Yeah, it's, we can't overwhelm the system. It's one thing we we do have to be cautious of. Well, yeah. start slowly, testing and figuring out. Right, and, and if you own a telescope on Skynet, your priority, your observations are taken before anybody else's in the system, except the gamma ray bursts. So it's all a priority thing. So if you have a telescope, it has to be at least a 14-inch telescope. But if you have a telescope in Portugal or elsewhere, then, then that gives you a lot more, um, you know, it gives you the high priority on that telescope and more priority throughout the system. Yeah, but I'm interested in telescopes that are at the night side of the planet when right. I am at the okay. day side. Okay, but see, I want a telescope on the night side mm -hmm. when it's daytime here. So you get a telescope in Europe, Okay. I can use it, yes, you can use mine. That's how it works. So we are using all the telescopes. We've used all the telescopes in Skynet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You know, they all they all give you images. Well, and you know, there are times where if you request ahead of time, let's do the gamma ray like if you had some kind of student special activity at night, you could get higher priority. So I think, that I, I think they want. Class. Um, I want the kids to see the telescope moving, like, you know, what we do with my the camera exactly. and then take the picture and see the picture coming. Right. You know what? We have a webcam on the Earth Youth One, and we'll link that, and there's a webcam on Stone Edge, and the Stone Edge telescope's mine. You know, maybe we could sell this over dinner and, and, and stuff, but uh, actually, I've already, I've already Rob, requested. you didn't interrupt me. <laughs> you were supposed to. You asked me. Uh, 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 yeah, you'll have more time. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. 
maybe five images from Skynet already, or in 51 for the, for the five. Uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you that your piece one is not going to take M51 for you because um, it's, it's uh, beyond the limits right now. Thank you. Please stand by.